Why do I have to be the caregiver? I never want to take care of my husband toileting. Why do you think I allow you and my son to get married in the first place? It's for a time like this, isn't it? It's not like you're going to be taking care of him for years. One year at the most. He's going to die soon anyway. So just have patience. My mother-in-law hated taking care of my father-in-law, who was diagnosed with terminal cancer with little time left to live. The reason why she didn't want to do it was simple. It would mean less time for her to see the man she was having an affair with. As far as I know, my father-in-law is a very kind and gentle man. My mother-in-law must have spent many years with my father-in-law. So how could she do such a terrible things to such a kind person? My father-in-law saw me having such thoughts. One day, as I was taking care of him, he said to me with a smile, Don't worry. I will take her to hell with me. A few days later, my mother-in-law really had to go through hell. I'm an office worker and a housewife, just an ordinary person. My husband and I have been married for about five years. And although we are not blessed with children, we still have a good relationship. We live happily and our married life is smooth sailing for the most part. Almost. There is one person who is putting a damper on our happy life. It's my mother-in-law. She will soon be in her 50s. I don't know what kind of magic she is using, but she looks like she is in her late 30s. Perhaps she has been pampered because of her parents, but she has a worse personality. When we went to greet her before our wedding, she said as soon as she saw me, Is someone like you my son's girlfriend? She was so rude to me. Afterward, when we talked with my parents-in-law in the living room, my mother-in-law listened to my story about my past and denied everything about my life, saying that I had a boring life and that I was shabby. Indeed, I'm not particularly beautiful. I was born into an ordinary family, and I have lived a reasonably happy and ordinary life. It's not a dramatic life. But why should I be denied so much at our first meeting? My father-in-law, who was standing next to her, told her not to be rude. And my husband told her to stop it. But she wouldn't listen to them. So on the way home after the greeting, my husband apologized to me and said painfully, I love you. But my mother has always been a person who can only deny things like that. And I don't think she will ever get over her bad habit. So, if you are disgusted with this marriage, you can reject it. My husband, who had nervously proposed to me, said this to me. It shows a great deal of determination and that my mother-in-law is such a problematic person. But I want to marry my husband because I want to be with him. And if I rejected the marriage because of my future mother-in-law, it would mean that I was running away from her. I didn't want to feel like I was losing. What happened after that is obvious from the fact that I have been calling my husband since the beginning. After we got married, we lived far away from my parents-in-law's house and saw them only a few times a year, mainly just at Thanksgiving and Christmas. That alone is quite mentally exhausting for me it's fine for me to help her with the house chores. However, she starts by complaining about how I help her, then continues to denigrate my personality. And finally, she starts bragging about how superior my mother-in-law herself was. I learned from this story that my mother-in-law and father-in-law are married through an arranged marriage. I also surmise from this that my father-in-law's family was quite rich and my mother-in-law had married him for his money. She once said something like, If he didn't have that much money, I wouldn't have married that old man. In addition, my husband and I had been asked to move in with her, but it was unthinkable for us to live with her, so my husband and I firmly refused. However, my mother-in-law has been calling me quite often lately. 
probably because she has grown tired of my attitude, and she even yells at me, asking me when in the world I'm going to move in with her. But I can see that if I live with her, I will be mistreated as a daughter-in-law and treated like a servant. In fact, she started saying something like, The quality of house chores has been declining lately because of that old man. If this continues, my house will become a dump. I wish I had someone to take his place. To begin with, this mother-in-law is so bossy that she has her husband do all the house chores. When we meet at my parents-in-law's house, she talks about her philosophy of what a wife should be and denies me. When my husband and I stubbornly refuse to live with her, she finally started threatening us. First, she called me on the phone. Are you going to let me just die? Then, she started spreading bad news about us to the neighbors. Finally, she sent an email to the company where I work saying, Your employee is the worst kind of bitches who disrespect the lives of the elderly. Fortunately, the company handled it as just spam mail. But since I did not know what my mother-in-law would do in the future, I talked to my husband and agreed to move in with her. Once we started living together, I was in charge of all the household chores that my father-in-law had been doing. And as expected, my mother-in-law was very hard on me. What's the matter with you? You were born into a boring family. You've lived a crappy life. You were born to be such a servant, and you can't even do a single household chore. No, I've never seen anyone with so little talent. How did you manage to marry my son? Maybe you were so good in bed. That's disgusting. If she's going that far, why doesn't she just do the housework until she is satisfied? I think so. But my mother-in-law is hardly ever home to begin with. After moving in together, I noticed that she wakes up later than my father-in-law, goes out before noon, and doesn't come home until late at night. At first, I thought she was probably at work, but it seems that is not the case. When I asked my father-in-law, he told me to let her do whatever she wants, and he helps me with my chores. My father-in-law and husband remained on my side even after we started living together. However, the more they took my side, the more my mother-in-law became offended. You know, no one in this house is on my side. What's wrong with me, a rich woman, picking on this poor little girl? She's a childless, worthless woman who is only good at night in bed. She must have gotten some kind of disease from some man in the past. That's why she can't have children. Even though I endured everything, I was hurt when she said that to me. The doctor had told me that I was less likely to have children than most women. My husband was so upset by my mother-in-law's vicious words. Don't be silly, you old bitch! My husband yelled at her. How dare you talk to me in that tone? Have you forgotten how much you owe me for giving birth to you? In fact, unlike this woman, I was able to have a child. That's why you are here. In response to my mother-in-law's arrogant words, my father-in-law said, Stop! That's enough! He intensified his tone. I'm the one who had enough of you. If I hadn't married you, you would be living in an old and miserable life by yourself. And I went out of my way to marry you even though I was so popular. Who do you think saved you from dying in solitude? My mother-in-law would argue with each of us in such a precise and malicious manner. Thus, no matter how hard I tried, I could not escape from my mother-in-law's verbal abuse. One day, when I was wondering how long I could endure such a life, my father-in-law complained of poor health and I accompanied him to the hospital. It turned out that he had terminal cancer. As it turned out, there was nothing more they could do. His life expectancy was one year at best. They say he even could die at any time. 
My father-in-law wanted to receive palliative care at home. He strongly wished to be at home rather than in a hospital, where he would die in solitude. We returned to my parents-in-law's house and held a family meeting. My father-in-law explains his condition, and I add to his explanation. My husband cries tears of grief. My mother-in-law, on the other hand, listens to the story with a terribly bored look on her face. She looks as if she is hoping the meeting will end soon. But right now, I'm not interested in what my mother-in-law is thinking. It is more important that my father-in-law spend as many days as possible, and that I cooperate with my mother-in-law to take care of him. But my mother-in-law's reaction when I told her that was unexpected. No, it was actually expected. Why do I have to take care of him? I definitely don't want to take care of my husband's toileting. What do you think I approve you and my son's marriage for in the first place? It's for times like this, isn't it? It's not like you're going to be taking care of him for years. One year at the most. He will pass away soon anyway, so you just have to be patient. My mother-in-law did not stop going out the next day. She even started going out more often than before and even staying somewhere overnight. My husband had a job too, so I decided to quit my job and devote myself to caring my father-in-law. Although taking care of my father-in-law was a lot of work, it was not hard at all mentally because I did not dislike my father-in-law who was very kind to me. But is it okay? I don't know how true it is that my mother-in-law married my father-in-law for his money, but they have spent all this time together. The time he has left is short. Wouldn't she at least try to spend some time with him then? One day, when I was shopping with this thought in mind, my husband had a day off and he was taking care of my father-in-law. Thanks for always taking care of my dad. I will take care of him today. So go out and refresh yourself once in a while. With that being said, I was having tea at a coffee shop after shopping at a nearby shopping mall. Then, I heard a familiar voice from a little distance away. I looked fearfully in the direction and saw my mother-in-law and a young man I have never seen before. I quickly hid behind a wall. I wondered if the reason my mother-in-law had been going out so often was that she was having an affair. While hiding, I listened to the conversation between my mother-in-law and the man. Then, I heard the most unbelievable words. Soon, I will be able to live with you. But are you sure? I may indeed be more beautiful than most of the women in my age, but I'm at least 20 years older than you. It doesn't matter how old you are. I can only see you. I want you to be with me. That's very sweet of you to say. You know, my husband is dying soon. I'm going to get a big inheritance. And I'm going to give you a big allowance too. It was such a disgusting conversation. She made fun of her husband, calling him old. And yet, she was being cheated out of her own money by someone younger than her. As I was getting angry with my mother-in-law, the two of them stood up. I ducked down farther so that my mother-in-law would not find me. Then I saw them leaving the coffee shop, and I decided to follow them out of the shop. Their destination was, as expected, a motel. Her husband is suffering from terminal cancer, and she's with a young man. She called me a bitch or something, but which one of us was it? I wanted to ask her about it, but I need to go home and cook dinner for my husband and father-in-law. Besides, if I got into trouble here, my father-in-law might hear about it. I didn't want to cause more pain to my father-in-law, who was already suffering from an illness. So I decided to capture them entering the motel with my phone camera and to go home. I continued to worry on my way home. If I don't tell my father-in-law about the affair, I might prevent him from being more in pain. 
But my mother-in-law is obviously counting on my father-in-law's inheritance. And it would end up in the pocket of the person with whom she was having the affair. Can I let this one go so easily? The answer to that question was not going to come in the time it took me to get home. So, while I was caring for my father-in-law, the thought of my mother-in-law's affair kept coming to mind, but I tried to act as normal as possible. However, my father-in-law found out I was out of my mind. Did something happen? My father-in-law saw through the hesitation in my heart. I wondered whether I should tell him or not. But I thought that even if I kept quiet, my father-in-law would find out with his sixth sense. So I decided to be honest and tell him what I had seen today. When my father-in-law finished listening to me, he was neither surprised nor angry nor saddened, but simply said, Hmm. Don't tell me you knew about the affair. When I asked him this, he gave a short reply and started talking about my mother-in-law's affair. According to my father-in-law, this was not the first time she had cheated on him. She had been having relationships with various men and breaking up with them repeatedly for more than 10 years. The reason why my father-in-law knew about it is that he had actually witnessed it and had even investigated it using a professional investigator. However, the evidence of the affair was just an insurance policy, and he had no intention of doing anything with it. My father-in-law had been prepared for some degree of infidelity from the moment his marriage to my mother-in-law, who was 15 years younger than him, was arranged. No matter how hard I try, I will get older before she does. I knew that one day I will look just like an old man, not a man to my wife. So I overlooked the fact that it was inevitable. Saying this, my father-in-law fell silent for a while. The next time he opened his mouth, my father-in-law sighed deeply, smiled, and said, I will take her to hell. One day, my father-in-law called my mother-in-law to his bedside. At the time, my father-in-law could barely stand up by himself. My mother-in-law came to my father-in-law's side, annoyed, and said, What do you want? I handed my mother-in-law an envelope, as my father-in-law had asked me to do. My mother-in-law took it with a wry smile, and when she peeked inside, her face immediately changed to a smile. Inside the envelope was $2,000 in cash, I have always been indebted to you. You always take care of me. As a small token of my appreciation, I will book you a room at the luxury hotel that took care of me when I was working. I can't go with you anymore, but you can use the money to spend three days and two nights with a friend or someone. My mother-in-law's face lit up. Yes, I was a good wife, wasn't I? You are so thoughtful, aren't you? Okay, I will call my friend and go visit there right away. A few days later, my mother-in-law, not caring about my father-in-law, went to that hotel. With a cheating boyfriend, of course. Later, after returning from the hotel, my mother-in-law put in an unusual amount of incoming calls to my father-in-law and me. I ignored the calls because they would interfere with my father-in-law's care. But they were so loud that I had no choice but to answer them. What the hell is going on? What happened to the house? Where did all my stuff go? Hearing those words, my father-in-law and I looked at each other and laughed. The day after he announced that my mother-in-law was going to hell, my father-in-law began to make various arrangements using his old contacts. He acted quickly and efficiently it must be true that he used to be a shrewd president. He tried his best even in his bad condition and tried to avoid wasting the time he had left. My father-in-law first asked to investigate my mother-in-law's affair. At the same time, he contacted a lawyer he knew and started to prepare a notarized will. The contents of the will are said to deny inheritance to my mother-in-law and only my husband and I will inherit. 
Both the lawyer and the investigation agent came to our house through my father-in-law's connections. Since my mother-in-law was not home for the affair as usual, she did not notice any bold move to some extent. Proof of the affair and the will. With those two things, you probably wouldn't lose if there was an issue over an inheritance dispute even after I'm gone. The adulterer would not get a penny. Furthermore, my father-in-law proposed that we move into a condominium that he owns. I'm going to give up this house with my wife. I don't have many good memories here. Besides, I feel bad that my son and his wife have to live in this old house forever. Yes, my father-in-law went out of his way to get my mother-in-law to go to a hotel to prepare for this move. My husband and I hurriedly packed up while my mother-in-law was gone and moved into the apartment my father-in-law had prepared for us. By the way, I sent my mother-in-law's belongings to the house of her unfaithful partner. I don't know what will happen to my mother-in-law's partner because I heard from the investigation that her partner is married and he has a wife. My mother-in-law who got to know all those things is speaking unspoken words on the other end of the phone. My father-in-law, who couldn't bear to listen to her, took over the phone and said goodbye to my mother-in-law. I will never see you again in this world. Thank you for everything. See you in hell. With that, my father-in-law hung up the phone. Later, according to a rumor, my mother-in-law was charged a large amount of alimony by the wife of the unfaithful partner. We thought my mother-in-law was going to fight over the inheritance rights as my father-in-law predicted, but it seems she was too busy with the alimony payment. So in the end, she lost her house and her savings and lost her way. A year later, my father-in-law died. Although he was initially told that he would only live a year at most, he was able to live for two years after being told that. And because my mother-in-law was gone, probably he was no longer under stress. I want my father-in-law to live happily in heaven because my mother-in-law gave him a hard time. And may my mother-in-law continue to live in a living hell forever.